Hello, you're listening to Me and Paranormal You with your host, Ryan Singer. Because it's more fun to believe. There we go. Is that, is that, is that rocking? Now we're back. Oh, I've yeah. got four different, three different programs recording this Yeah. right now. Simultaneously, we were talking about tweeting before tweeting was tweeting. And yeah, yeah. I how used... it was riding on the back of dirty trucks. Just a, mm-hmm. you know, a very ominous or mean-spirited message to yeah. people. I would, uh, I would often record myself on an audio device of like just doing a Chinese voice, and then I would just let it go on a balloon. Oh, and people were probably like, did yeah. you, the comedic genius of this yeah. uh, unknown man <laughs> uh, who is clearly not Chinese. Yeah, I, obviously. No, I would, always, I would always put a picture of myself and, uh, you know, do the audio recording and then put my address and all, you know, any, oh, okay. every way to get to To make to me. sure yeah. people understood who was yeah. so, so funny. Yes, I mean, I'm a bad man, punish me. Oh, yeah, I'd well, so you were, you really envisioned <laughs> the future and understood like, oh, you know, sooner or later people are going to understand that mm-hmm. this is not cool. Yeah, absolutely. I, I didn't like it. I remember watching the first Eddie Murphy album and just shaking my head in disapproval. And just be like, <laughs> I mean, if you go back and listen to that, and I've had this discussion with people before because someone's like, Eddie Murphy's a top five comic of all time. Yeah. And I would say, no, he's not. Sure. Because his material doesn't stand the test of time. And does yeah. anyone's material truly stand the test of time? Well, I would argue that you could go back and listen to Steve Martin and yes. Steve Martin's material stands up. Um Cosby's material stands up too, unfortunately. <laughs> it, it's it, right. It's like, it's, it's annoying. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know a comedian in my general age range. I mean, Bill Cosby was the first stand-up comedy I ever listened to yeah. on a record. Yeah. And it transported me to a whole other world and changed the course of my life forever. Really? And so it's like, I've had this discussion briefly with other people, but I feel like the one thing that we don't address in stand up in the world of stand up comedy and i haven't watched uh w kamal bell's series yeah 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 we got to talk about cosby yeah uh on cnn which apparently was very difficult to even get people to be on really to even like honestly talk about cosby and that's a whole different community than what i'm a part of as right. far as you know i'm just a white guy right 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 so right. it's it's a whole different thing and the idea that We've had to mourn multiple heroes, yeah. right? And there's not really a protocol in place no. to, okay, this is how you deal with right. one of your favorite people of all time who inspired your life. Right. Being a really, or behaving at the very least, behaving as a really awful person. Yeah, I mean, it really throws like <clears throat> it throws down the gambit for your 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 uh, moral constitution. You know what I mean? And like, it really, it's like, well, what about this? You know, what if I what if I put your favorite your favorite person who's been the biggest influence in your life? What if I told you he's a big piece of shit and he's a monster? Oh, you don't believe it? Here's eighty seven women to tell you about it, and then you're like. Okay. Okay. What do I do with that? You know. Yeah. Like, How do you I, process all the joy and the, yeah. the happiness and the inspiration that you associate with that person? Yeah. Now you know to even publicly talk about it. Yeah. Becomes uncomfortable. It becomes all this stuff. I got Kevin Tinkin back on the program. That's right. We I forgot. <laughs> uh, we redid. We had to redo the intro because I've got seventeen different software programs recording simultaneously. Oh, is that fan still on down there? Do you mind hitting that button for Not at me? All. Um, I don't think we can hear it. I mean, you'll, we'll hear the motorcycle racers before we hear any of that, but thank you. Um, yeah. You know, fan. I've been doing this eight years. You know, I got everything figured out. Dialed in. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You figure it out, and then the technology will change. You know what I mean? Constantly. And then you've got to learn something new. Uh, yeah, I learned I learned so much Final Cut, and now every time I talk to anybody, they're like, are you on Premiere? Are you on Adobe Premiere? I'm like, I, I'm using Final Cut, but they're like, oh. I feel your pain because 
I'm editing a documentary, a paranormal investigation documentary series currently. Oh, shit. And I am using Premiere for the first time ever. Yeah, yeah. So I've been teaching, learning myself. I've been learning myself. I've been done learning myself real good. I've been learned <laughs> good by myself. So, um, have you talked about that documentary on, on here yet? Or can you? Yeah, I have talked about okay, it. Okay. Okay. Some might say ad nauseum. Okay. Okay. No, I, cause uh, I, I'm like curious. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to go. Well, listen. I'll just, I'll give you the short, the, sh- the short, uh, tease. Uh, I, I did basically, I tried to contact aliens in a haunted house. Hell yeah. And it was a haunted <laughs> school, but a haunted house is just easier for people to wrap their brain around. Yeah. And your boy got fucking talked to. Really? Well, it wasn't just me. It was a bunch of people. But I believe I've established contact with an extraterrestrial intelligence that has continued the conversation. Holy shit. So that's what the series is kind of turning into. By the way, your uh, your hair getting longer and you having the beard fits that sentence so much better than before. <laughs> You know, <laughs> dude, I'm talking to aliens. I believe I made contact. I went to this haunted school. Now I'm yeah. talking to aliens all the time. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so, I, uh, I I might have to convince you to show me some uh, some footage later. Oh what, yeah, after what? I got like I'm I'm close to a rough cut of the first episode. Really? Yeah, dude, that is awesome. That so, is so exciting. It's a companion piece with a stand up comedy special we filmed in the school, but that is beyond my control as far as release and all that kind of stuff. As the business, you film of those kinds of things. Your stand up special in the haunted school after two nights of doing paranormal investigation in that same school. On the third night, oh, I filmed the show. Did you crush with the aliens? Uh, they, the <laughs> aliens really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I was the only one who could hear them. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, no, I mean, dang I it! Because <laughs> I, I, you know what it is? Because sometimes, because you, you've said some things before where I'm like, "That's a good bit, Ryan. This guy's got a mind on him." I tell you what, the creativity, and you're like, "No, that actually really yeah. happened." I, I have a recording of it if you want it. I'm like, "Holy shit!" Dude. Well, uh, Jeff Tate and I were sitting on the couch with. Uh, Lauren, the woman I'm, I live with, my betrothed. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. We're not, she's not my betrothed, but and uh, at one point Jeff goes, looks at me, and he says, "You say more stoned things <laughs> than any person who I know who smokes marijuana." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not smoking marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that's fair. I think that pretty much sums up." Yeah. How I sound to a lot of people, but. But um, it, that's why it's so interesting, though, is is like the because you are you are uh, expressing a willingness. I think that's one of the things, too, I think that is so attractive about you is you are open. Well, I need to be having you on this program about every other week. Hey, with I, the way I, this has started out. I'm telling you. No, you are. You really are. Because <laughs> that's the thing about some people is like. Uh, let's go like the basis, like the most basis uh, level of interaction where you're like, especially in Hollywood, you know, where it's like you're not even allowed to like sometimes you express an opinion that's that maybe is like, oh, I didn't I didn't really love all in the family or whatever. I'm, I'm making up a bad example. And uh, it'll be like, oh, that's oof. I, I, OK. Well, I wouldn't really go around telling people that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But this you, mundane thing that has really no consequence whatsoever yeah yeah i i didn't agree with the the selections at the golden globes this year oh how dare you wow yeah uh, remind us to remove you from the invite list yeah yeah but you, you i feel like if if i had something crazy happen to me like at, literally at any point and we're by if you you know we're i feel like we're good friends but we're you're definitely not my closest friend but if something wait, crazy wait wait what <laughs> if something wild happened and I wanted to talk to someone, I would talk to you first. Oh, okay. Because I know that you wouldn't be like, you fucking crazy or whatever. You well, know? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And you you would actually have an open mind. To you, you witness someone shapeshift a couple times and the next thing you know, you, I know t- you realize like, okay, yeah, I'm going to not close off my mind to yeah. anything at this point. It's, 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 I've told so many people about different stories like that with, with you and like, cause I went down the rabbit hole of your podcast for a while when I first listened to that first episode with the shapeshifter. And then I was like, uh, the shapeshifter. I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't be yeah. nice. Well, I've never, you know, I don't say her name, so it's fine. Oh, okay. Bur- okay. Beautiful. Uh, Meredith uh, or what? I don't know. <laughs> um, but it yeah, actually her name. I can't believe I'm going to do this. No. 
Her name was was actually Martha Washington. Really? No. <laughs> Let's see. I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> it was it was actually the ghost of Martha Washington. Yeah, the, I was I was. <laughs> you were dating. You were dating the ghost of Martha Washington, uh, she, and she just always kept saying, "You should think about wooden teeth." Yeah, yeah. You should just. I don't know. I, I think the, they're hot. The taste in my mouth after yeah, yeah. Making so out, the hickory. <laughs> so you went down the rabbit hole. Yeah, I went down the rabbit hole to kind of check some of this, and I mean some of the stories. So then I'll tell people or whatever. I'll be like, "Hey, yeah, if you check this out, if you this, this, he's hey, he's, it's it's real. It's all this is Ryan. Ryan will put it out there, and like a lot of guys will be like, "Oh yeah, I heard about that." Like you know the and uh, but I I just I love it. It's the mo- it's one of the most like that type of shit, especially the way that you put it out because it's probably been what. Four, four or five years since you, since uh, we did ours. Yeah, no, no, no. Since you recorded the the shape shifting one, uh, it's been a, it's probably been a while. Yeah, I think it was probably twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it's like, uh, but you just go into it kind of fearlessly, and I, I just I don't know. I I, I like that when you're kind of like, look, this is what happened. It sounds crazy or whatever, but this is what happened, you know. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where I think when you have an experience that is so overwhelming. Yeah. You, you're not, I wasn't given a choice just to never talk about it again. Right. So, and I mean, starting the podcast was, you know, selfish in a way because I was like, I need to find other people to make myself feel less crazy. Yeah. Right. And yeah. And then you realize that and you talk about this stuff on stage. I never realized people would be like, I, you know, I, I was always trying to make it funny and relatable. Yeah. But then when you meet people after a show and they're like, thank you for saying that stuff publicly i can't believe you're doing that publicly yeah. i'm just like what do you mean like and uh is, that's not something i ever i was ever like i'm gonna talk about this publicly so yeah i mean i do love talking about that stuff publicly because it's fun right to watch people react to mm-hmm. you know and there was a story about one time there was a, i was doing a show and a buddy of mine told me he's like so i went to the bathroom like right after your set and there was a guy in the bathroom with me and he goes so what do you think about that uh, comic trying to tell everybody that God's not real? <laughs> I could have done without that. And he goes, what? And he goes, he believes in Bigfoot, but he doesn't believe in God. <laughs> and my buddy's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember that bit. So he was like upset yeah, that I'm yeah, up there yeah. telling people Bigfoot's real and God's not. And that's not even the joke. Right, right, right. But um, Well, and that's the thing, too, is like, Especially with when you're when you're uh, uh, divulging something that could be taken as like oh he's doing a bit, and then you go with something kind of real. It's like people don't even sometimes you know guys like wait a sec. And that is the that is the uh, the curse of the stand up comedian. Yeah, because I believe it was in the uh, the one of the Lenny Bruce biography books. Lenny struggled with the idea that. You know, when you're on stage, when you're a comedian and you're on stage and you you say something that's true, mm-hmm. everyone thinks it's a joke. Right, right. And when you're off stage and we see this in so many different ways and there's the whole spectrum of extremity in this. Yeah. When you're off stage and you say something funny, everyone thinks you're being serious. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's I mean, Lenny Bruce was talking about this shit like, you yeah. know, 60 or whatever years ago. And it's, we forget that people, first and foremost, when they find out you do stand-up comedy, they view you as a comedian. Right. And then, when you're being funny in real life, or if you're trying to be maybe around people yeah, who yeah. don't know you, they don't remember that you're being right. funny. Because we also forget, and the world has awoken to this, especially in the last five years. Yeah. When comedians are around each other hanging out, there is absolutely no limit no. to what we will say to each other <laughs> yeah. and say to each other's face. Right, 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 right. And so now you put in the intermediary of the Internet in there yeah, where comedians just kind of talk. And I'm not saying that it's all acceptable. And it's on permanent record. Yeah. Now yeah. it's on permanent record. Green Room Talk has gone permanent record. Yeah. Right. And there's been some awful things said in the green room before. Oh, yeah. And... And I'm not sitting here saying I condone that, but due to the nature of the business itself and just what comedians do for a living, 
we don't have filters when we're around one another. Right, 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 right. Well, I, I, uh, I have often, when I host open mics, uh, I will often say things to make fun of the comics because of that aspect. I'll be like, I'll talk about my wife, who's an amazing person we met at church. She's genuinely one of the kindest people I've ever met. And uh, so I'll go, I'll be like, hey, my wife wants to meet you guys. You know, and I, I, you know, I'll talk about how great she is and how sweet and innocent she is. And uh, so I'll tell her, I'm like, you can come meet these other comics. But at some point, as a joke, they will come up to you and tell you that they want to fuck our kids. And uh, oh, and and look, look, when they do that, don't be a real stick in the mud. <laughs> all right. Try to be cool. You know, I'm trying to get booked out here. I can't have the offended wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So just. Roll with it. Yeah, yeah. Be be cool. <laughs> don't don't be a prude about that it. Is, that is that is that is <laughs> speaking of permanent record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's on permanent record. Well, uh, that's what it is. Because I've always <clears throat> like I've always been around comics. Because I come, I go to, I went to church forever, and so everything was like very. You know, uh, you know how to be appropriate. Everybody kind of understands or whatever. And then I move out here and it's a different religion, but it's, you know, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a version of it. But some of these guys, man, like my closest friends out here would say some of the most fucked up shit just to be funny or whatever, try to make the circle laugh or whatever. Yeah. Which is, you know, I think at, at a certain point, you know, the rule of comedy is, if it's funny, it's funny. Yes. Like, if it's funny, it's okay. Right, right, right. But if you go too far... Yes. And it's not funny, it's you're funny. an asshole. Yes. Right? Big and time. it's... So, if you're going to swing big... Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe have a little bit of understanding of who you are and who you're swinging around right, to. Right, which right, right. There needs to be some accountability yeah. in the world and in the world of comedy, even. Um, but... Yeah, it's like when you swing big uh-huh. and you miss, now you're like, okay, maybe you need to scoot away from right. the circle for from, a while. From the side of the stage, that's my favorite thing to watch. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to watch. I don't know if you're like, if you're sick like that. Every comic loves watching the strug. <laughs> it's so, when you just see somebody go hard and it doesn't work, and especially if you love the guy who's doing it or gal, uh, and like, oh man, like it just, it just, it kills me. It'll just because I'll, I've seen you know like our buddy Bruce, you know, there's been some moments, and uh, just to watch that shit happen just kills me. Yeah, and and it's like there's a difference though between, and I think the last few years has really like exacerbated this problem. There's a difference between being shocking and funny yes and then just trying to be shocking yes and there's no joke there right and that's when to me i'm like are we doing comedy still or what Mm -hmm. like is this is this comedy are you trying to make people laugh are you just trying to shock people with no joke at all that's the thing a lot of times people say a joke a joke quote unquote you know and it'll bomb and they'll assume that oh the audience they're prudes it's like yeah, maybe, but you also didn't do any work there. You didn't. There was no setup or punchline. You just mentioned necrophilia, and now you think people are supposed to bust out and like, oh, so I guess you guys are too cool for that. Too, too cool for fucking dead people jokes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Oh, is a church group in here? Yeah, it's like, yeah. You know, I mean, it's like try to actually be humorous. Yeah, you know? try to understand the visual image you're painting in people's minds. Yeah. That they didn't necessarily ask for, which right. is, you know, all comedy is. It's like you're painting these pictures in people's minds and then they laugh because they envision it. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and it's like, do you want someone coming in and leaving your show and being like, I feel like I just binged the TV show Mind Hunter. Right, right. Right? It's like, <laughs> I, 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 hate, I hated that I watched that show. Yeah. Uh, and binged it, essentially, because the imagery wouldn't leave my fucking it's mind. It's really dark. For, for a while and it's like i can't binge or really watch a lot of that kind of content because it yeah the way my brain and imagination works it just it just ugh, it festers yeah yeah, in there. yeah. so let's That's talk about let's talk about rabbit holes a little bit please and so you're talking about going down a rabbit hole after you know we first chatted yeah i'm curious not about 
the pot, my podcast. I'm curious about of all these different rabbit holes that you went down. Yeah. And admittedly, there's a ton of them on here. And I sometimes I get really fired up about a certain rabbit hole for like a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And I'm just all in it. And I think I got alchemy figured out. (laughs) I got to go to France. Yeah. And so uh, but (laughs) what rabbit hole resonated with you the most as far as like topic? Yeah. Yeah. Content. The. uh well, f- first off, the uh, the shape shifting thing first was the the first thing, obviously, because it's just so vivid. It's hard to you. It, I either have to call you a liar or I have to believe it. You know what I mean? And the way you painted the picture is so vivid. And I don't think you're a liar. So I'm like, you know, what I, something enters into your brain where it kind of wait a second because i never even heard of that like a shape like you know what i mean it wasn't even in the context of a possibility for me i heard about the bigfoot stuff i've heard about aliens of course Mm -hmm. abductions all that i've i've you know i i've seen you know the fourth kind or whatever and uh the the movie it's Uh, on the outskirts of the paranormal yes yes world for sure then uh i i did a couple of of, uh youtube searches about shape-shifting and stuff and found some other videos out there and i was like holy shit this most is of crazy. it's alien reptilian related yes, i think probably yes. reptilian yeah it was a lot of the and, reptilian. you know that's like ufo alien kind of like overlordish yeah vibe to it right the um, biggest thing though ryan was uh, this you got a, a blanket with the pyramids on it and that mystery, it's actually just a big towel is it a big towel? no it's it's a tapestry <laughs> <laughs> I like how you called it a blanket, though. You got this blanket hanging. You got a blanket. It does look like a blanket. That's what it tapped. You got a duvet is. cover over here yeah. with the pyramids on it. That's what Singer's hanging duvets and pillowcases yeah. around his house. He's got a hand towel with the Sphinx on it. Uh, somebody just tried to get in, or maybe the wind blew. Or you didn't lock the door, did you? I don't think I did. It's probably Tate. Okay, okay. Jeff? Maybe I did lock it. This. It's unlocked. It should be unlocked. Hey. Hey, Jeff Tate's walking into the apartment right now. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> we thought someone was trying to break in there for a second. Me and Jeff just hang out at uh, hung out at Todd's house the other night. So it was. It's like I haven't. It's like two, you know, two hangs in a in a you week. You guys can't get away from each other. I know. It's a, we're like magnets. Um, but yeah, the so the 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 pyramids and the 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 aliens being involved in the pyramids and all that shit. And then I I I like I told you I. Listen, to, I watched this documentary on YouTube. It's like a four-hour documentary about the the emerald tablets. Emerald tablets? Emerald tablets. Yeah, the yeah. emerald tablets and the Sphinx and the construction of the pyramids, and I'm into it, right? I'm so, I'm like, holy shit. I've got the link ready to go to send to all my friends. And then at the end, it gets into this conspiracy about the Jews, literally. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, shit. Like, yeah. I, I can't, now I, now I can't send a link to people and be like this video is insane like yeah and unfortunately that is i mean it's like i sometimes i feel like i'm beating my head up against a wall with this and people who listen to this show they're probably i don't know if they're tired of it or not but like it is astounding how many deep into the conspiracy game people there are who have never heard of the protocols of the learned elders of Zion, yeah, which is anti-Semitic propaganda, which is the foundation of so much of the New World Order. That's and, that book that you, you're, yeah, I've got to print it out here. That's that signed and copy, it's, and that, it's that gross signed. to read. Yeah, yeah, it's not enjoyable to read because you're reading, you're just like, ah. But yeah. then there are people who believe it to be a real thing, right? And it's been proven, even in the 19th century, after it first kind of surfaced. It's been proven to all be bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And it was debunked in like local publications saying this is not real and this is why. Complete lies. Yeah. And it found its way through Henry Ford spreading it around. You know, it's like the F one fifty. I always the joke is it's not built for tough, built Nazi tough. (laughs) You know, it's like or those Panzer tanks were built for tough. Yeah. Um anyway, so it is it's aggravating and it's frustrating that so much of this becomes just this anti-Semitic bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, George Soros, George Soros. Yeah. It's like, yeah, George Soros is rich beyond all of our wildest imaginations. I'm sure he has a lot of influence in the world. Yeah. Right? He's 
Um, is he hiring fake protesters to get violent at certain things so that the you know the liberals can then say the conservatives right, are right. getting violent at BL, uh, Black Lives Matter marches, things like that. Um, you know, it's because you know he's part of this. You know, he's part of you know this Jewish New World Order. You know what I mean? Running all <laughs> them and the, him and the Rothschilds. And yeah, all yeah. Stuff. And the Rothschilds, whatever. I'm not saying the Rothschilds right, are right. good people. Sure, sure. But um. Well, that's the thing about all any uh, anything that's on the periphery of mainstream culture, like conspiracies, you know, is the misinformation. And I think because I've 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 looked at some of the things about the propaganda and the techniques that you use and put out all the information, but put it in a cereal bowl of bullshit. You know what I mean? And I think that's what happens a lot. You know, so you you'll get some of this information, but we are so just absolutely soaked with bad information. And so then you have to filter that shit out. Like, like they, the fact checkers in the last presidential debate could not even keep up. Oh, yeah. There's no way. Because uh, the way the technique that Trump uses when he talks. Yeah. He's like, I'm giving you so much bullshit with a little bit here and there that is actually maybe true. Yeah. So fast. And I'm contradicting myself by the end of a really long run on sentence multiple times. It's impossible to keep up with. Yeah. Which seems crazy. Right. To think that people resonated with that and were like, but he hit those reptilian part of the brain function buttons. Yep. You know, he Mm -hmm. he got to their like scarcity. Yeah. uh, Safety and all that shit. Right. Everything's bad and I'm on your side. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm the best. It is. It is, you know, my biggest it's it's my biggest frustration with the world of the paranormal because conspiracy theories have invaded the world so deeply in the yeah. last few years that you watch any documentary it's almost like you're waiting for them to say and then the new world order yeah or yeah then the jewish mm-hmm. uh patriarch rothschild or, or it's just like fuck man can yeah. we you know they're because at one point it's like not everything i do See, this is where it gets complicated for me because I do believe everything is connected, right? Yeah, yeah. And I believe the connective tissue of all this is consciousness. Now, to sit here and be like, not all this stuff's connected is very contradictory to what I'm saying. But sometimes when you see an alien, you see an alien, right? Right. And it's, but now what you have is we live in a world where people are saying, no, those are man-made greys. Yeah. Made by the, you know, the elite. Right who are trying to scare up an alien invasion of, that's not real. Mm-hmm. And then real aliens are going to invade. Yes. And, but we'll all be united already under the new world order because right. we have to protect the earth from aliens. So it's, it's, it's difficult to believe anything, especially cause there's so many different sources now. Yeah. I, w- I watched a documentary on that too. Uh, um, documentaries are the are the best and worst for a curious mind uh but the it was the the bald guy who was uh i believe dr stephen greer yeah 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 uh it was his uh he had two of them <clears throat> and i think he's put out three or four now has he what do you think about that guy i mean is that i mean i mean i love love is a strong word yeah i'm team greer okay okay so because that's how i when i'm watching it i'm I, I don't know if I'm just gullible or it's it's a good quality to have if I'm your friend because I do I just believe a lot of the time you know and uh, I mean it's not a great quality if I'm trying to get somebody to do cheap uh, body work on my car uh, from a stranger a homeless guy that I met who's and then yeah. runs off with my two hundred bucks which happened to me uh, but um, but yeah he's uh, that the stuff about the the uh, the uh, the reproduced. The UAVs or whatever the or UAPs, UAPs, yeah, yeah, and uh, the the war, you know, the fake war and all that shit. Like that's, I mean, that's that's nuts. But uh, there's also a big part of me that's like, well, we'll see. I mean, I'll I'll probably live long enough to be able to see that. You know, I've got to start working out, but you know? yeah, yeah, you got you got to you got to bulk up for the big alien I war. Do, I got to get I got to get yoked out of my mind, yeah. you know, because it is. It's troubling when you now I have to be careful what I say here. Okay. There are private conversations I've had with a friend of mine who's in contact. 
with extraterrestrial. Yeah, I'm not trying to go all David Wilcock and or, you know Corey well, Good here, which is you know like I'm there's one guy who, who talks to the blue avians and people who hate that say oh the blue chicken cult people I like this but he's the only one who gets information about the super secret space program which is different than the secret space program yeah which is different than the space program right so i'm not this is not like that yeah but i've had conversations with a friend of mine and he mentioned a few different things that uh, that were part of a message receiving from extraterrestrials yeah and I have a hard time. Uh, I mean, I have a skeptical part of my brain, just like anybody else. Right, right. I have a hard time when I really push back when apocalyptic and or religious, and especially religiously apocalyptic themes oh, yeah. come into play regarding anything. So I've been down that road, and yeah. it was miserable for me. So when... Someone who I trust and believe their experiences starts telling me things like that. Right. I push back. Well, because th- that's either going to... You have to. But then when I talk to someone else and then who they don't know each other, Presents the same information in a compelling and, quite frankly, shocking way. Yeah. I have to go back and revisit and be like, oh, I'm so biased against this stuff. Right, right, right. That I, and I, I'm trying to remember the word right now, when, like, you refuse to believe of impending doom is coming to you. It's like this mental thing you do. Denial? Uh, it's not denial. There's like a, anyway, I'll, I'll think of it later maybe, but, so when... I see this information and it's so specifically the same. Yeah. From people that haven't talked to each other. From people who haven't talked to each other. Yeah. Then I start to be like, oh, fuck, man. Right. Um, Because there's this one thing that's very specific and it's about drilling. It's about deep earth drilling by oil companies and they've gone too far. And now it's like we let the fucking snake out of the box like drilling to hell almost well essentially but yeah. not with like demons have been released and right. elementals and here come the sylphs but, yeah yeah uh, it's you know just fucking up the earth yeah yeah as yeah. far as us being able to live on it right and we've gone that far already yeah as far as this drilling goes and there's there's a guy chad Kalick, who's made um Three documentary films, part of a series, the Sir No Face series. Sir No Face, Two Face the Gray, and then Phantom Rider. Watch them in that order if you're going to watch them. Say it again. Sir No Face. Uh huh. And I'm telling you, it's worth watching because okay. you will never see more compelling footage of a ghost or really? something unexplainable caught on camera during a paranormal investigation. Um, I mean, maybe you will, but I mean, this is like it's it's indisputable yeah, practically. Yeah. And so, and then it just starts leading to this crazy other thing happening in the next two films. And so part of that film, specifically the last one, brings up that specific drilling information, which a friend of mine has mentioned months and months and months ago to me. And so now I'm just like, fuck. Yeah. Right. Like, what do I do with this information? It's not that I didn't believe my friend. Right, right. It's just that I'm okay. I'm not going down this like religious apocalypse. Right, right, hole. right, right. And about, you know, the world ending. And everything's hitting the fan. Yeah. And it's not that far away, right? Right, right. And that is, I don't want to say it's ultimately where every paranormal investigation goes. Because it's certainly not, but when you start to get the government involved and yeah. secret government operations and and things like that, typically it starts funneling into, okay, the apocalypse or end of the world, great alien war. Yeah, and I don't know. Caleb lays it out to where 
Earth, the leaders of Earth don't want to be a part of an intergalactic alliance. We want to be a standalone planet. Yeah. And it all stems from the rich who control the planet wanting to keep Earth the way it is, keeping us down. Yeah. So they can maintain their power over us and be wealthy, right? Yeah. And, Ultimately. Right. And it resonates so with me insane. on so many levels. It's insane, too, that it comes down to that. Like at the end, you know what I mean? Like it's the because as outlandish or whatever, any of these at the end of the day, it's like, well, they're going to so for money. It's like, what? That, that's insane. But it's also it justifies it. And it, it brings it to a basis like an understand. Oh, I understand greed. OK, cool. It's easy to understand. Yeah. And where the problems come in for me is the key to escaping this very unfortunate future, the power lies within each individual. Yeah. um, In the form of consciousness and tapping into consciousness and figuring out how to get into that and then elevate ourselves, right? Like through meditation type Through meditation and things like that. And... Part of the plan is to keep everybody really busy, yes. away from all that. Distract. Everybody's on their phone all day long now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not being centered and, you know, present. So that's like what's laid out is like, this is how they do it, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and. Well, you know what I like about that? I like that because even if you're wrong, it's still not a bad idea. You know what I mean? Like if you say that the consciousness is like that, you know, you got to be present and be conscious. Uh, it's a complete lie. It's not true at all. Your life's going to get better. You know what I mean? Like if you're in a practice of trying to be. I'm going to debunk present, this whole meditation thing. Yeah. And then, be, you know, a month later, you're like, I don't really feel the, the need to like have to debunk anything now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though, because like when. And I and I don't know if, if you if you feel this at all, but when you stumble upon to s- something, whether multiple people know about it or you're the only one, when there's a big problem, especially with stuff like this, where it's like it's something that is on the outskirts of the fringe, you know, that people could criticize, and then you're going, no, 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 I'm aware of this problem, I believe it's happening, and I want to do something about it. A lot of times, these problems are so big, almost every time. They're so huge that one person could never do that. You know what I mean? You, you feel helpless. Yes. And see, that's, I think, a big problem because it feeds into our desire to be saved by somebody. Yeah. And, you know, it's, ha- it's happened. To, I'm, I'm not above this. I was, you know, I thought Bernie Sanders was the guy who was going to save us from all this, right? And it's like the problem with that way of thinking is that we want someone else to do all the work for us. Right. So we can just keep doing the thing we're doing. Yeah. But then, but then things even get better as we're do just not changing. And so we are absconding all responsibility whatsoever. Yeah. And there are certain things in tactics used to make people feel extra responsible for stuff they're not responsible for too. Yeah. Like when the big companies and everybody, the messaging is like, you have to recycle, you have to recycle. And yes, I believe in recycling. Right. But the pressure should be mostly on these companies that are creating all the bullshit. Right. That are responsible for 80% exactly. of the problem. So if they didn't do that, yeah, we could still recycle. Yeah. But we wouldn't feel like if I forget to recycle one plastic bottle, yeah, I am the worst fucking person on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You're whipping yourself. My footprint. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're talking about footprints inside inside a crater the size of the moon yes. left by these corporations. Mm-hmm. So it kind of goes both ways, right? Where we look for someone to save us. And then we expect us to also have to be the one to save yeah. everything. Did you see the Seaspiracy uh, documentary about the guy trying to clean up the oceans? I haven't watched that one yet. You should I've watch that it. one. I think you'd appreciate that one. 
um, you know, regardless of how accurate it is or what. And I only say that because I thought it was very accurate, but then who knows? Somebody could be like, oh, Kellogg paid for that documentary. Um, but he basically, it, it, it went down to him seeing that a lot of the ocean's pollution was due to these huge corporations, which is kind of a no-brainer. Like, yeah, yeah, I think we mostly know that. But he really pressured it, put pressure on it, went to some of the organizations that were trying to clean up the oceans and ha- had a really hard time with anybody being like, yeah, it is the fishing industry. You know, we need to fish less because they won't do that. You know, they're not going to fish less, you know. So, yeah, not uh, when the population continues to explode. Yeah. Yeah. Not when there's money to be made. See, I think that's the big problem, too. Like, I don't want this whole episode to be about this is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know. Capitalism is the new religion. Money yep. is God. Yep. If I have enough money, me and mine are safe. And yeah. that's what everyone's been taught and raised with and inside this system that is filled with propaganda that is pro capitalism. Yeah. And so like the fact that you even say the word even saying the phrase the government has so many negative connotations for yeah. people. If people don't realize that there's been an active propaganda campaign against the government right. for over a hundred years. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and so in like socialism, and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. it's like it's pr- there's been constant propaganda for so long, making people think that that means they lose freedom. Right. 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 So um, it's all very complicated. But the way to get out of all that is in an indiv- as individuals. Right. And it's not easy to do, and I haven't done it. Right, right, right. But through consciousness and elevating oneself beyond this, because it's like a superpower. It right. becomes a superpower, and I believe that is the way that human beings expound and expand into the universe. Yeah. Meanwhile, you've got Elon Musk littering fucking space with his bullshit satellites every week. Dude, he's going to make it impossible for us to leave the planet. Yeah, yeah. Without running into a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, but Wi-Fi. But Wi-Fi. We get the Wi-Fi though. And you know, then he's on like other like panels being filmed, being like, "I've been talking about AI being a problem, and it's 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 a real big problem, and yeah. it's really scary." Blah blah blah. Meanwhile, he's making it so we can't take a fucking spaceship off the planet without running into fifteen of his fucking satellites. Right. Right. Um. So. But hey, everybody's not perfect. Right. <laughs> He's done some amazing things. But he, even billionaires aren't perfect. Okay? Yeah, I can't believe it. I can't uh, believe it. And it's not to say that the guy, <laughs> clear, clear, clearly the guy has some brilliance. Yeah. I'm not over here saying that he's not, he's not brilliant. Right, but, right, right. Um, and I don't have the answer. Right. Hey, I mean, isn't that great, though? You get to just, you get to just let it out. You know, yeah. you, you you put it out there. Hey, this is what I'm feeling. You know, that's the way that you be. You get to be on podcast. I'm on the grassy know? knoll over here taking yeah. pot shots at Elon Musk. Yeah. Um, it's a, it should be a 60 second video where you present the problem and a solution. Yeah. And then people will take the solution and they will just go with it because people, you know, they just want to help. Yeah. You know, they just want to help out. Yeah. That's what everybody's all about nowadays. Yeah. I would always tell my there was a time when me and my brother were getting into it about Trump. And when I say getting into it. I mean, I don't give a fuck. I've literally, there, it, there is, it's been so long since I felt any type of power in any type of way. So like having an opinion on the political climate, I got him, you know, but I'm with my brother. We're at a family gathering. I haven't seen him in years, you know, and we're talking about Trump, you know, and so I'll, and I'll, when we got into it, I was basically, like, look, I love you. I don't want to talk about politics because if me and you came up with the solution, the perfect solution, we had it. We got it right here. And if it goes into implementation, all of our problems are going to be solved. We can't get this done. This is not going to get done. Even if we figure it out, no one's going to listen to us. So could I just hug you? Can you just be my brother and we just not talk (laughs) about this? Because, oh, man, because that's the thing. I mean, I I think there is like a level of uh, guilt or a weight uh, uh, or like it's like a rubber band where you're going, this is a problem here. And then, you know, what can you do about it? You know, a lot of times there's, uh, I, that's why I love what you said when you're like, it just, if you focus on your, your own journey of, of being present and, you know, all that type of 
stuff. I think it, it also shows you how small you are, you know, in this, in the scope of things, but it gives you some sort of functional purpose that actually do, will do something and won't ruin your family relationship. Be the change you want to see in the world is yeah. one of the oldest adages. And it's not a way to shirk all responsibility to your fellow humans by saying, I'm going to focus on me. Yeah. Um, that's not, that's not, I think, what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. And Because ultimately, when you do that, you are helping the collective. Um, interestingly, though, I don't know why I'm thinking about the pyramids all of a sudden. But <laughs> You do have a, a, a huge... I do have a huge... Beach blanket. I do have a huge oven mitt <laughs> hanging on my wall <laughs> with the pyramids on it. Um, it's awesome. I love it. The... The idea that human beings came together and built those, it's not beyond belief. For right. Them, right. Even though it's, they're astounding, right? Yeah. That's the big argument of people like, oh, people don't want to give, you know, the the people who built them, the slaves and everything, like, who built them credit. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not about that. It's the fact that there's water damage on the Sphinx. That's what this is about. Yeah. Right. And there's not water there. No water there. So... That's what this is about. It's not about that. How big the stones are, where they were taken yeah. from. <laughs> exactly. So when you think about... Listen, I know the world is different than most people believe it is. My world is anyway, right? Yeah. As far as what I'm willing to believe and what I know is possible. But that moment where we all know that we're part of an intergalactic neighborhood, mm -hmm. that we're not alone. UFOs are not hiding in the shadows of clouds or through cloaking or whatever else. Where you look up in the sky, you see a helicopter, and then above that you see a UFO flying, and it's just another Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, and you know... That whatever is flying that UFO probably has a combination of human and alien on it. Yeah. Really? Well, I mean, I'm talking about the future here. Whenever, sure, when, sure. It's, when it becomes the fabric of what right. we all, what everyone has had to accept is our reality now, right? Yeah. It's not crazy anymore. It's not weird. It's not paranormal. This is just the way the world is now. Right. The universe is that. And so at that point, what is the world looking like? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But. For me, I know this is the reality. I believe it to be, I should say. Yeah, yeah. But still, when the world is confronted with this as like, this is it. Right, right, right. Um, I don't know what will happen. Well, th well talk about this. So what the, when the government released the Tic Tac video... Because you were talking about how you were doing, you were doing a live a live stream with it, and I I am still blown away, and I, I I'll even say of my own reaction of the general public's complete and total ignoring of the government being like, "Yep, they're real. Here's the videos." And three days later, yeah, what's going real. on with Kardashian? You know, people are still. It, it's in, it kind of blows me away that it wasn't. I mean, it was international news, and like. People are intergalactic news, you know, but people kind of sloughed it off, you know, yeah, they released and, yeah, the, and, the yeah. files online. You yeah. know what I mean? It's uh, and John Greenwald over at blackvault.com. I believe it's the blackvault.com. I can never remember his website. Anyway, he sent a Freedom of Information Act request. Immediately after the Pentagon released their report, and I believe it was the end of June last year. And they were forced through the FOIA mm -hmm. request to release more. This guy does like the big work when it comes to those Freedom of Information Act requests. Say his name again. John Greenwald. Okay. He's always, I mean, he's like filing one every day. You really? know what I mean? He's like out there getting these documents. And there's more. There's a lot more that they didn't send out. And then he pushed and now more has come out. Having said that, many people will argue inside the ufology world yeah. 
that the TikTok video, the videos that they released are man-made UFOs that have been reverse engineered from UFOs that have crashed on Earth. Yeah, yeah. That are being purposely put out there to be filmed and then purposefully later released in a slow disclosure. Yeah. Setting up the fake alien invasion, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it gets so hard to comb through this shit. Yeah. Right? You can, and it's been proven by Dr. Greer and the people who do CE5 protocols. What are those? The Close encounters of the fifth kind. You initiate UFO yes. sightings and alien contact. With the laser pointer. That, that, that kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. So through intention and through thought and through meditation, you can create... Three o'clock on a Tuesday, yeah, or Wednesday. You, if done right, very high likelihood of success. We would see a UFO. Yeah, right. Amazing. So, knowing that shows me, and I've done this before, and we've seen some crazy shit. Really, Dude, and just out here in Altadena, I want to go with you so bad. And it's. Stuff. It's just sitting somewhere. We did it at night. Taking a bunch of deep breaths, sitting quietly for a while, setting an intention, and then just paying attention. Yeah. And we definitely saw something that was not a satellite, not a plane, nothing we could. It wasn't a shooting star. It wasn't anything like that. So that proves to me that it's not all man-made shit, right? Right. Because if we are making these UFOs, which I believe it's very likely that we also are flying UFOs around. Sure. Do we have the same technology of consciousness right, right, advanced right. in such a way, which they clearly have, and that's what the secret weapon is. That's what their secret fuel system, et cetera. Their advanced technology is that they've tapped in and understand that consciousness is the key to everything, right? Yeah. And they use that to travel through space-time, uh, nice. along with anti-gravity and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't believe that the U.S. government specifically, or the hidden parts of the government, the shadow government, are using the consciousness aspect to just sit around and be like, oh, there's some people in Altadena sending out a intent right, 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 to see right, UFOs. Right. Send out uh, send out Jerry in the A-15-7. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So There's a general somewhere meditating. Uh, we're feeling it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Is it Pasadena? No, Palo Alto. Okay, yeah, let's yeah. go. So I do believe yeah. that it's it is very possible that you know, some of the footage that was released is, in fact, a UFO. Yeah. And not a man-made craft that replicated one. So, and I mean, people are doing CE5 all the time everywhere now. It's amazing. And so to, you can't control that if you're the government. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Um and it's not 1984, not yet. Right, right, right. right. So you can't control that. And well, the virus, we you know, we got the chip in us. Oh, now, yeah, so and I got probably, boosted, too, which oh, means I can't have kids. You got all the chips. Um, but, yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I, I do think that um, everybody thinks it's going to happen in their lifetime who's really into this. Yeah, yeah. All the signs are pointing it's going to happen soon. And it's the same way with biblical prophecy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people thought Jesus was coming back 30 years after he died. I know. They were like, all the signs are here. And then 60 years later, it was like, oh, this is it. All the signs are here now. And so. It's an even number of the year. So, yes. Yeah, exactly. It's 2000. So he's coming. Yeah. And so we always think we're the ones. Yeah. uh, Who are going to see it. I'd love for that to be the case. Yeah. Because it fundamentally changes the way civilization is run. See, I've never seen anything. I've never seen... Anything of any kind whatsoever. <sighs> yeah, as far as a- alien stuff goes, yeah. I, I've never... I mean, I felt creepy shit. I saw... I, we talked about it last time where I saw the quote-unquote demon possession. Um, I still don't know. I was a kid, you know, but, uh, uh, the, but I've never seen... Uh, uh, UFO. I've, I've tried so hard. I've been in remote areas 
you know, but I'm usually like, because if it is a, a conscious, a subconscious thing, and if it's a meditation thing, I'm with a lot of skeptics most of the time. So like, um, I, I mean, I don't know if that has something to do, but I literally have, there been so many times where, because when I watched that, uh, that, uh, I'll keep wanting to say Pam Greer, uh, Dr. Greer, Dr. Greer. Greer. Yeah. When I saw that Dr. Greer thing, I literally did that. And I have two green laser pointers and I, I was like sitting in my apartment and I just could, I'm just not, I wasn't, I'm not good at meditation. I got to get better. I have to practice. Um, it's easier when you're not good at it. It's easier when you have someone guiding you. Yeah. 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 I need, I, I, that's why I'm like, I got to piggyback on, I get, I'm going to suck off one of these, not suck them, but I want to, I want to leech off of one of these uh, Ryan experiences. Well, we'll have to do that sometime. I would love and to. Because, I mean, it's fun to do, too. Yeah. Or just have an excuse to go hang out. Yeah, and I'm listen, I'm no pro at it. Yeah. But I did see five, my variation, a variation of that stuff. That's amazing. I did that stuff in the haunted school. Because uh, my goal through this whole project is to show that consciousness is the connector between ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot, all this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, trying to widen the net so to speak in most people's minds because there's right. a lot of people who already believe that and have been talking about that for a while but it's not my thing i originated right but doing alien trying to contact aliens inside of a haunted building yeah and then see what happens yeah um you can get results from that that type of technique in all paranormal phenomena i believe that's right. amazing. So it makes sense, though. To me, it makes sense. Yeah, as well. Yeah, and it would be great though if it didn't make any sense at all. But I'm like, <laughs> I got to keep trying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact that you had it, I mean, that's the that's the thing about all this stuff is is it's 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 para para science, para psychology, para you know, and belief is a component of that. It is, and but belief increases your probability for results. The thing, but I, I mean, I have my, I have my BS in psychology, which is any BS is just the study of the scientific method. And if it's replicatable results and you're controlling all the, you know, outliers and extraneous variables, that's all you're looking for is a repeatable result, you know? So it goes from the para psychological psychological or whatever to no this is actually there's testing you go through a set of trials and if it's repeatable then you have something right so that's why i've always because like i say you know I'm, I'm very gullible for lack of a better word but i haven't seen it i keep wanting to see it and me and my buddies like my my church buddies from back in the day we did a podcast like 12 years ago um, which is insane uh but we would all, all the four of the guys that were the main guys in there, we were all like, we want to see Bigfoot. We want it. So we would always, we would go camping every year, you know, in the, the, the north, uh, northwest, you know, up in Oregon and random places where there was Bigfoot activity and stuff. Never nothing. But we got, you know, had a great time, smoked a lot of weed and, and uh, you know, made some amazing memories. Well, Bigfoot hates the smell of marijuana. Is that true? No. <laughs> I <laughs> see. I'm just like, what? Oh, oh, no wonder. Yeah, no wonder. That's what it is. Well, I guess I'll never see. Bigfoot. It's like uh, <laughs> you know when beekeepers use tobacco to keep the bees docile, subdue the the beasts. We gotta we gotta keep marijuana burning all the time on a Bigfoot thing, or they'll they'll or they'll be aggressive. <laughs> yeah, you don't understand, man. It was years ago. Someone I was approached about doing a uh, a ghost hunting show. And like, but the premise of the show was that everyone had to be completely baked the whole time, stoned. And I was just like, I was like, as much as I want to be on TV more, yeah, I don't smoke marijuana, yeah, yeah, and I'm not gonna just have panic attacks every episode, right, right. Uh, but uh, it was, I don't know if it ever went to air. I, I don't remember ever seeing that show ever. It go, sounds like a Doug. Well, it was actually a well-known. It was actually a well-known comedian who was. Oh, in charge really? Of it. I, I probably shouldn't be. Yeah, it sounds like a Rogan a thing, or a, a but uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, but I was like, oh, that's an interesting thing because you know I do believe that whether you've been drinking or on drugs, that in no way disqualifies an experience that you have. Yeah. That is strange, 
um, even though that's the big thing. I wasn't high. I wasn't drunk. Blah blah blah. Right. And, you know, everyone. It's like, well, okay, well, okay, now you're a little more credible. And it's like, right. Well, no, when you're letting your guard down. Right. Right, and we're getting rid of some of the ego barriers of like this is what reality is and blah 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 blah. I'm sober and this yeah. is my fucking world. Um, I think we do open ourselves up to it a little more potentially. Yeah. And that's why I don't think smoking marijuana and hanging out with your buddies, having beers, camping out. Yeah. I don't think that should necessarily exclude uh, activity from happening right. around you. It's such a fun, funny way to discredit something too. Cause it's like, if you've ever smoked weed, you know, that's not how it works. You don't just see things, you know yeah. what I mean? Like <laughs> that, that always cracks me up too. Like when, you see, I don't know. Somebody does something crazy. I mean, you like, see more possibilities. Yes, you're open and connections. Yeah, yeah. But you're not hallucinating. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're not going to just make. Oh, yeah, we all hallucinated the same thing. Like, come on, knock it off. Like, yeah. Uh, it's like talking to my mom about smoking weed or something. Like, I right, probably jump off a cliff. It's like, so if you were to let's wrap it up with this. Yeah. If you were to guess, level of or flavor of or characterize mm -hmm. what you imagine your reaction would look, feel, sound like. Yeah. When you have this first interaction and not just like a distant light flying in the sky, right? Right. Which can be really fun and amazing, but something a little more close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In real, whether it's a ghost, a Bigfoot type creature, yeah, or an possibly even an alien being, yeah, or a craft that lands somewhat close, or it's following your car at night, yeah, yeah. What do you think Kevin would be doing in that moment? I know exactly what I, I know. So it's because I've met. I I think it would be almost exactly like meeting a famous person that you really admire where you're freaking out. You're genuinely like, holy fucking shit. I'm talking to this person that I, I'm, you know, it's a lot, I mean, especially meet somebody that's like super, super famous or whatever. And you're like, holy shit. But you have to act like you've been there. You know what I mean? And I think that's exactly what I would do. Cause I've, I've been in situations where I start getting scared, you know, where I'm, cause I have, I'll go up to the, I, I live up in Sunland, so I'm right by the mountains. So I go up to the mountains all the time just to clear my head and convince myself to continue living. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I will, in those situations, I have tried to do the meditation and like some, and I get scared. I get scared. I'm like, what if it actually happened? I try to really instill the context in myself. And it's always just try to be cool. You know, act like it's not a big deal. Try to be friendly and open, you know. Visualize it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, I mean, I've I've been stung by bees and not freaked out. I'm like, I can do this. You know, if uh, so I think I think that's probably what I would be doing. I'd be my heart would be be beating incredibly fast. I'd probably be sweating a little bit, but I would be very conscious about trying to be calm and be perceived as calm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to. You'll have to experience that with. Yeah, me. we'll, we'll have, have to see. To... Well, it's interesting because the night we were in like the Altadena area, up in the hills, mountain area, at a park, we were all sitting in a circle, and after a while, seeing stuff and like you know everybody seeing it, and then after a while, a couple people in the group were like. Because we were kind of enclosed by brush and tree. Mm. And there was this little, mini little, tiny little clearing. And a couple people were like, anybody else hearing, like, the animals or whatever they are, mm -hmm. like, circling us right now? Disturbing the brush. Like, they're, like, pinning us in, it almost feels like. <sighs> and so that's when we're like, okay, yeah, maybe we'll get the fuck out of here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there, it seemed like all the creatures were just kind of closing in in that yeah. small circle around us just beyond our sight. Did you guys have a fire going? No. No fire. No, it was, no, it was you know, I'm not going to be starting a fire at night out in the L.A. park. Okay, okay. I, yeah, it was, okay. In a park but, um, yeah, it was a park. It was an actual park. Yeah. So 
where you can go like hiking and stuff. But we went at night, um, which you're allowed to do at this particular park. I see. I would be the guy if you were to be like, "Hey, I feel like something is," and this is. I don't know what this says about me, but I would be like, "No, let's wait. Let's see what happens." Well, yeah, I mean, but and that's when I get uh, murdered. <laughs> yeah, well, when someone tells you something that is making them really uneasy yeah. or scared, I don't think that you would. You're probably right. React in that way necessarily because you you're not totally lacking empathy. Yes. No. So uh, that's you, true. Because you can tell when someone's like, "Hey, maybe we shouldn't be here." There's a big difference between that and, you know what? I think we need to get the hell out of here because yeah, yeah. this is making me fucking un, un. This is unnerving me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see that they're like, "Oh, yeah, we need to go." Yeah, I would probably step into z- dad zone at that moment. Yeah, for sure. It. Yeah, but I. Yeah, but that's the kind of stuff too where I'm just like, "Come on." Come yeah, on, but as someone who's been around. terrified before, I would. Yeah, I don't hesitate at all to leave those situations. Yeah, if yeah. anybody's feeling uneasy, that's that's good. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, you can stay here by yourself, Kevin. Mm-hmm. The rest <laughs> of us are going to go back down this mountain. Like, fuck you, I'm rolling. I'm yeah. hitting a huge joint. Texas, when you get home, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make some new friends tonight. Yeah. Fine, take off, dude. An alien put me on their Instagram story. <laughs> I was real nervous at first, but I I, I I made them think I was calm and cool. I, was, they, they, I fooled them. Yeah, I, I fooled them. them. On the inside, I was, oh, my God, I can't believe it's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, uh, tell people, like, because uh, you're helping out Eddie Pepitone on yes. the uh, Apocalypse Soon podcast. So and fun. Eddie is great. You're great. So Apocalypse Soon is the podcast. Yes. Check out Apocalypse Soon. Eddie is a, 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 just an absolute brilliant man. He's an and he's 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 just so kind. He's a great person. He's like, such a sweetheart. He's a sweet guy, and he's hilarious. I keep waiting for him to do something to ruin the relationship, and <laughs> and to have to be professional and be like, God, I wish I could stop doing. But he's just been amazing, man. And uh, and I get to be on camera with him, which is uh, an absolute uh, dream, just because he's amazing. Eddie's yeah. the bit the best. And then uh, I do a podcast with uh, our friend Bruce Gray called Bag Fries, which is just me and him. And uh, you can watch us just uh, have conversations and be idiots. and uh, Over a bag of fries. Over a bag of fries, yeah. Well, I don't even know. Oh, it was because we wanted to, it was like Bruce's deaf comedy jam name. Like, Bruce, bag fries, gray. And then <laughs> every time he tells a joke, he goes, it's the, the fries at the bottom of the bag. Yeah. And... We were just trying to think of a name, and that, that I would just that bit had come up. That fits I'm, Bruce. I'm like, let's just do it. Let's call Bag it fries. fries. Yeah. So it's been fun. We're uh, pulling a lot of audience from the podcast I did previously with uh, Ben and Jace Avery, and uh, yeah, it's it's good. Cool. Well, Kevin, this has been fun. It's been great. I always love hanging out. Thanks for coming by. I'm going to do a real quick outro, so I don't have to re-record more. Yeah, go for it. Ryan's here in comedy.com. Tour dates for the summer and later in the year are popping up crystallize app download that app please send me a screenshot of the five star review you'll be entered in for a giveaway for some uh free sustainable swag maybe some jars maybe stickers things like that uh instagram you know i'm out there tiktok i'm on there now ryan's here comedy trip cool train i'm gonna read you some poetry tonight trips out there dr darren cornwall portals what are they he's out there talking about portals um, so we appreciate it. So, uh, Darren Tripp and I appreciate it. <laughs> Much obliged to the follow. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you're doing well. We love you here over at the Mindcast. We hope you love yourself. And if we don't see you somewhere out of the show sometime soon, we'll see you at the watering hole on the astral plane. Ain't that right?